Hey guys, Ivan here, so we are one day out of Vancouver Pro Show and we have a couple of physique updates, three to be more precise, two from the Open Division and one from Classic Physique and as you can see right here, this is Ian Valier at a couple of days before this show and he looks really grainy, right? There are a few more photos I'm gonna show you in a second, but let's stick with this one for a minute. So as you can see, uh, most muscular is probably his best pose, along with a quarter turn pose, if you wanna call it that way, and also side tricep. Most muscular is one of his best poses. Now here, obviously, he was, I wanna say flat, but he wasn't as full as he's going to be for this show. He's probably gonna get a little bit fuller, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the, the final package that you see right here. If he wasn't happy with the way he looked, he would not take his shirt off, he would not pose, he would not take this photo for Instagram. Because Ian is like that. He doesn't wanna show anything until it's done. He doesn't wanna show unfinished product. So here he looks probably close to what he's gonna look on stage. If you check out his YouTube channel, he posted an arm workout. And this is what he was wearing throughout the whole video. An oversized t-shirt with longer sleeves, so you can't see anything, basically. You cannot see any single part of his physique. He was also wearing sweatpants, which is something he wears all the time. He never wears shorts, because he doesn't want to show his calves. So basically here you can only see his forearms a little bit, a little bit of his arms, and you can kind of grasp the idea of what his conditioning is like, but you cannot really see his physique. He doesn't want to show us anything. So since he decided to take this photo to take his shirt off, yeah, it means that he's pretty much done, his product is almost finished. Now this photo was taken, as you can see, with a camera, and I don't know why the quality is so poor, but it is what it is. Now as far as his physique in this photo, from what I'm seeing, his chest is known to be his uh, one of his weakest body parts, and as you can see, it's kind of separated in the middle. It's not like the the, the widest, the fullest, uh, you know, chest, but it's it's pretty hard. It's pretty separated. Not only in the middle, he has cross striations. Uh, he looks really grainy, really hard, and uh, you know, it looks good. And I think his chest looks fuller than before. Now, as far as his arms, he has huge arms. Even though some of you guys say he doesn't have any triceps, he wouldn't have 22 and a half inch arms if he didn't have any triceps. So he has triceps, maybe not the best looking horseshoe, but the triceps are there, trust me. And the thing I noticed is his abs. Now, it could be just uh, the fact that he's crunched and lighting, but his abs do look thicker. Now, I follow Ian, and I never really heard him that he was focused on improving his abs. His abs are pretty bad, like pretty shallow, really, really shallow. You cannot see any separation, pretty much. Um, he knows that. He spoke about that. I don't know if he was trying to make them better, make them bigger and thicker, but for some reason, they do seem pretty prominent here in this photo. I hope it's gonna be the same thing on stage. Overall, he looks uh, very lean, very hard, very full, and uh, I think without a doubt, this is gonna be another win for Ian, fifth in a row, actually. As far as conditioning, he is shredded, man, he is dry, and that's why I respect this guy so much, he's always on. The only time that I saw him off was 22 Tampa, other than that, he always hits the peak, he's always full, he's always shredded. And as you can see right here, he is lean, he is really dry, the glutes are separated, and you know, you might be thinking, from the side they look separated, but how do they look from the back or from the front of the glutes? And they look also very good. As you can see, there is basically no fat left there, the inner part also looks really dry, and the glutes are looking really big, really thick, really developed. I am curious though about his upper glutes, which is usually the area where fat goes away last. We cannot see that in this photo, but I'm pretty sure it's dry enough. So he is conditioned, guys. He is really lean. As far as calves, I don't know what is happening with his calves. How can they be so underdeveloped? As you can see, the outer head looks, I guess, decent, and if the inner part was matching the outer head, uh, it would be a, you know, a good set of calves, but unfortunately there is nothing going on in his inner calves. Why is that? I noticed some people are commenting that he had uh, some kind of injury, and that's why his calves atrophied, they were bigger before. And as you can see here in 2016, his calves looked decent, they didn't look uh, so horrible like they do today here as well so there might be some truth in this but you know i follow ian regularly i watch him on podcast all the time and he never spoke about this he spoke about his underdeveloped calves and he spoke about hiding them with his sweatpants and so on but he never talked about any kind of injury or any kind of reason why his calves are so weak but i think he said he does train them 
But I think the answer is everything else grew so much that everything is just out angling, dwarfing his calves. And that's why they look so much smaller. And also he's probably not training them as hard as he could. That's just my guess, you guys can tell me yours, but thankfully for Ian, the judges don't really care about calves. So forget about them, take a look at this photo, tell me, do you see a Vancouver Pro Show winner? Because I do, but right now Antoine Voyant looks really good, look at his side chest, look at that side leg, look at the conditioning, also he got, you know, pretty grainy, pretty conditioned, look at the freaking calves. The back, you know, not, not the, the thickest, the biggest, the widest back, but, you know, he's lean, he looks good. This could be his best package ever, honestly. Even though he said he's downsized, he doesn't look much downsized to me, and he looks probably in his best conditioning ever. Now, as far as beating Ian Valier, that's gonna be a really big challenge, but, you know, Anton has some strengths. He has pretty good aesthetics, he has a small waist, he has complete legs, like he has calves too, some of the best calves in bodybuilding, really, hamstrings, quads, glutes not so much, but hamstrings and quads are good, and overall he just has a really nice flow, really nice classic shape, and if nothing else, it's gonna be a very interesting comparison, mass monster versus aesthetic looking bodybuilder. I am also very interested to see how will they compare one next to another in the lineup size-wise, because Anton actually weighs pretty much the same as Ian, so he's 259 as you can see, and Ian is actually around the same weight, so it's not like Anton is 230 or 240 or something like that, they are similar height, maybe Anton is a tiny bit taller, but they are similar height, similar weight, so as far as size, they're actually gonna be much closer than we can imagine. But I noticed this before with bodybuilders who have really massive legs, you know, legs weigh a lot. So he has crazy legs, and that's why he weighs this much. As you can see, his upper body, even though he says he's flat here, and I trust him, his upper body is not really that large. I don't think his upper body is any bigger than Chris Bumstead's, really. And I don't know if you guys see it, or it's only me, but his shape also reminds me of Chris's physique as well, as far as upper body. Of course, Anton has much bigger legs than Chris, and that's why he's an open bodybuilder, but as far as upper body, he's not really that massive. He's gonna get bigger when he fills up, he's flat here, sure, but still, I mean, upper body, not that big, let's be honest. And also, he says he downsized, so he probably lost some muscle from the upper body. But overall, it's a very nice package, and it's gonna be definitely an interesting lineup in this Vancouver Pro Show, Ian Valier versus Anton Voyant. Whatever your thoughts are, guys, tell me in the comment section down below. One question for you guys, do you have trouble sleeping? Well, if you do, try this product, it's called Vintage Bliss, it's gonna help you with your sleep, it has so many great ingredients, an amazing combination of all kinds of sleep aid supplements, and guys, the link is down below, use the code EVAN for a 12% discount. I did say there were three physique updates before the Vancouver Pro, and here is the one that you may have missed. In my previous video, I talked about uh, Chan Kang here on the right, and I missed this photo. It's him in the back double bicep, and I wanted to show you this real quick. I'm not gonna talk about this too much, because I just wanted to show you how good his back is. He is looking really good from behind as well. You all saw what he looks like from the front, but as you can see, his back is also really good. I don't think it was this good a couple of years ago at the Mr. Olympia, so I think this is something he definitely worked on and improved. So once he wins this Vancouver Pro, I'm pretty sure he will win it. He is also gonna be a serious threat at the Mr. Olympia. Not only that he has craziest muscle bellies, crazy small waist, prettiest shape ever, he also has a really good and developed back. And that makes a serious, complete bodybuilder. Talking about the classic physique Mr. Olympia and Ian Valier as well, this is his brother-in-law, Chris Bumstead, the current reigning uh, Mr. Olympia classic physique champ. This photo was posted a couple of days ago by his girlfriend, and I just wanted to share this with you guys because he looks, you know, he doesn't look super impressive in this photo. It's nothing crazy, it's not really much of a physique update, I don't want to talk about this for too long, but when I saw this, I held for a moment and I, and I looked at this and I thought, well, Chris Pumpster doesn't really look that good in his offseason. And right now, it's his growth phase. He's pushing his body, he's training hard, he's eating a lot, and he's doing the most gear that he uses. I mean, he said it's only 500 mix of tests, I don't really buy that, but whatever he's doing, this is, this is the time when he grows. 
so he probably got a little bit chubby as you can see in the in the midsection right there he does have maybe a little bit of fat you know those abs don't look super hard the skin doesn't look uh, completely tight and as far as his chest you can see the right chest and yeah he's holding the phone with his right arm so he's uh, holding his arm in that kind of position where your chest is not gonna be super firm but still i mean i expected chris to look much more impressive right now even t even taking a photo like this so, I mean, this is not really any kind of physique update, I can't say anything based on this selfie, but I thought it was interesting. So, I, I stood there and I watched this for a second, and I thought maybe my followers on YouTube are gonna be interested to see this. And if nothing else, it's, it's kind of motivating. So, I'm sure when you guys take a selfie, uh, sometimes you might think, wow, I look fat, I look bad, I look flat. But as you can see, even the best in the world in classic physique, Chris Bumstead doesn't look super impressive uh, when he's just taking a relaxed selfie unless it's taken like professionally and he has a pump in the gym under great lighting he doesn't look that impressive not really so this kind of tells us that these guys even though they seem like freaking gods they're just normal people and sometimes they get a little bit fat sometimes they don't have a pump and the lighting may not be the best but when your girlfriend asks you to take a photo take a selfie with them you're not gonna try and find the best lighting possible or the best angle you're just gonna do it and if she posts it she posts it and it's on there it's on social media and you can see this is what chris bumstead looks like relaxed when he takes a selfie so <laughs> make of that whatever you want all right, and I also wanted to show you what James Hollingshead looks like right now, and he looks like a freaking monster. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of those arms. They are literally forming a circle. A circle. And this guy is not even short. He's 5 foot 11. So take a look at his arms once again, they are freaking massive. Also, when he does this front double bicep, when he lifts his arms up, his chest doesn't lose any fullness. Most bodybuilders, especially the ones with a little bit flatter, smaller chest, when they lift their hands, their arms up, when you do a front double bicep, for example, their chest disappears. But not, not James Hollingshead, no way. Look at, us, look at the thickness of that chest. So I'm guessing he was training probably chest and biceps before he took this photo because his chest looks super full here and also his legs i mean look at the size of his legs also forming sort of a circle and his waist looks pretty tight pretty small so he looks really impressive right now and unlike ian valier i talked about him before he doesn't want to show us anything unless it's ready james collins is posting too many photo updates and that's why i'm not talking about him that much if he was posting a little bit less frequently, we would be able to see progress that he makes. But this way, how can you notice any progress if somebody is posting photos every single day? If you look at a physique every single day, you can't really notice that it changes. So he needs to post stuff less regularly and it's going to look more impressive when he does it because uh, this photo looks really, really impressive, man. I'm telling you, he, he made so much progress from last year and if he doesn't mess it up like he did last year at the Mr. Olympia, he's going to be one of the most dangerous bodybuilders on that stage. But first, he needs to win a pro show to follow up at the Mr. Olympia. Which show is it going to be? It's going to be Arnold Classic UK. And I think he's most likely going to win that show. He's prepping right now. As you can see, he looks absolutely ridiculous. He is so massive and he knows how to come in shredded. He does. He came in peeled a couple of times. And I think we're going to see that again this year. But with this newly added mass, it's going to look monstrous. Here is another client of Patrick Tour, Keon Pearson. As you guys probably know, Patrick is coaching James Hollings and Ian Valier as well. But here is uh, Keon Pearson at this point. As you can see, he's 208. So he's already below his cutoff in 212. So he's definitely not going to be as big as he's allowed to be in 212. He's going to be below that weight and quite a bit below, really, because I see that he needs to lose maybe even 20 pounds, I don't know, 10 at least, at least, as you can see right here, I mean, of course, he's, uh, as Patrick says, he's empty, of course, he's empty, he's flat, he's not, I he should be, but uh, I don't think he's really that lean, as you can see on the right photo in his lower back, there is still quite a bit of fat, like, I mean, I don't know if it is fat or water, whatever it is, but there is still something to be trimmed off, he doesn't look that, that tight, as far as glutes, they're looking decently lean for three weeks out, so, I mean, there is still more work to be done, three weeks is enough time, if they 
push things a little bit, he's going to be conditioned. He is not going to be super, super diced, shredded. I don't think that's gonna happen, but he's going to be in decent conditioning. Uh, what is he gonna weigh? Below 200. I think maybe like 190, 195, something like that. And I think he's going to look good with that conditioning. As you can see, he's doing Tampa, and I don't think there are many top level 212 bodybuilders that are gonna be challenging him. As you can see in the comment section, Cody Drobat is also gonna be competing there. I think he's also three weeks out, so he's probably gonna do that show as well. And uh, I don't think he's gonna challenge uh, Kian. I think he's gonna win this show, but as far as being a top contender at the Mr. Olympia, I think he needs to do a little bit more. I followed Keon's offseason and he looked like he gained so much muscle that he won't be even able to compete in 212. I thought he's gonna move to the open, but it wasn't all muscle, really. Once he dieted down, it was obviously a lot of uh, a lot of water. I wouldn't say there was a lot of fat, it was just mainly glycogen and water. As you can see, he lost a lot of that when he started dieting. Now, he has a Mr. Olympia 212 winning potential and Patrick Tour is a great coach. He can't do much in one prep, Patrick, I mean, if he works with Keon for a long time, for a little bit more than one prep, you know, if he does at least one off-season with him, I'm sure Patrick Tour can lead this guy to the very top at the Mr. Olympia. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.